abrindo o um micro aqui enquanto isso. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, so we are in another CPD month webinar, and tonight we have Raquel Ribeiro. Uh, I hope you're enjoying. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying all our CPD webinars. Welcome, Raquel. Thank you so much yeah. for being with us. Hi, everyone. So I'm Raquel Ribeiro. I'm speaking here from Sao Paulo. And I'll be trying to multitask. Uh, <laughs> there is a chat. I think we can all take part of this chat, isn't it? Yeah, uh, everyone can ask questions on YouTube. Okay, so I'll, I'll be reading out questions to Raquel by the end of the talk. All right. So just to, I just want to introduce you really quickly, Raquel. And thank you again. I, I'll say thank you throughout. <laughs> In every minute I have, I'll say exactly. thank you for being with us. And Raquel Ribeiro is passionate about the potential technology has to enhance the learning and to promote inclusion of blind and visually impaired students. She is an EFL teacher and a e-learning contributor at Cultura Inglesa São Paulo, Brazil. She's a Google innovator, ad tech blogger, and lecturer, and the current manager of social media at Itafo Learning Technology State. So, again, thank you so much for being with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Priscila. So, I'm really glad to, to have you here, taking up your time for CPD July, considering it's uh, somehow recess or vacation for us teachers. Well, during these minutes of our webinar, we will be walking together along this journey of some key tools and especially the reasons and how to integrate this while teaching English as a foreign language or while teaching English as a foreign language, depending on our contexts and scenarios. So I know I'm mostly speaking to an audience of teachers who are working around our territory here in Brazil. And the first thing to consider are our realities. If we think of classrooms, so if you consider language teaching contexts, there's such a variety of them age ranges, schools, connectivity, limitations, and the challenges and demands that we teachers go through. This just to mention a few things, a few factors. In order to get started today, uh, I prepared uh, something that blends in between a presentation and participation somehow, okay? Do you have your mobile phones with you and do you have like access to type because I would like your participation. Uh, let's see if we can somehow have this exchange of ideas in a more intense way, yeah, in a more intense way, yeah? Okay, I'm going to start by sharing with you Yeah, I think now this is going. So using learning technologies in ELT. Let me see if I can choose the other way of sharing that actually enables me to be a little bit there. Raquel, I am not sure, but uh, I don't think we can have uh, you in the screen at the same time as your uh, presentation. So we have to take turns. Very well then. Yeah. So going back and then a precious <laughs> lesson to learn. Every time we are teaching and using technology, we go through this process of getting to adjust and learn how technology goes. And things are not like, okay, I click here and I immediately have a result there. And this was just one example. I'd like to go on to the concept of 
uh, generations and the attitude and mindset. I know it's a bit of talking and maybe you say, okay, uh, we want something that is more hands-on, but theory and research is also important when we go through this past path of choice. Uh, many times people say, look, uh, younger generation can deal much better with technology. And then why is that, that if I have been a teacher for a longer time, then I'm going to have more difficulties. Then my answer is yes and no. The Generation C, it's not an age group. This is an attitude and mindset. It is not like we think just because we were born in a certain decade automatically reflects in I can use technology better. This is also a way to consider not to be scared of our students, because I know very well when we face a group of teenagers or a group of adult learners, it is intimidating to a certain extent. Another thing to consider, of course, there are what they call here, and this comes from Google, I'm sharing with you in a bit, uh, digitally savvy folks who create this content. And when I say create content here, I'd like to, yeah. When I say create content here, let's move away from the concept of amazing flip charts or PowerPoints. First, because they are really time consuming. And once you have something all oh, beautifully made and designed, hardly ever do you want to go back Ah, okay, and change it for another group. So to consider that create content actually translates, considering especially 2017 onwards, the current days we've been living on, uh, the fact that we direct the resources so that students co-create along with us, keeping the key purpose of learning in mind. Another thing is about connectivity in the sense of being with other people and learning from them. Exactly what we are doing here right now. That's what is going on. I'm going to share with you uh, this link right now. And in order to test, uh, here's, and then I think, Pri, I'm going to need your help. I'll be sharing here through the message a link it's actually a short link and I would like you to access because this is going to be our portal for communication, okay? Do you think you can do that, Priscilla, in the YouTube chat? Because I'm trying, but I haven't. Priscilla? Let me see, I think, somehow. In this link, Just as a test drive, I'm going to share with you a link that is exactly showing this path. I'm trying to get connectivity here via YouTube as well. Raquel? Yes. I'm going to. Oops. Hi. Sorry. I was trying to fix my computer here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm trying to, I'm at, uh, here. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have this on YouTube so people can interact with you, okay? Okay. I'm trying to access the YouTube as well. So that, could you share, could you share this link with them? 
Yeah, I just I've just shared. I just shared it. Uh, it's just yeah. because I don't really. I'm not very technology savvy <laughs> for ah, some but things. Know, this, this, but I'm this, learning. <laughs> you are learning, and trust me, you really are. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is something really important when I share things with teacher colleagues. The fact that we plan something and there is always a little bit here and there. So the first thing I'm going to do in that doc I've just shared, uh, let me show you how the doc looks like. Is this link for your reference when it comes to, let me just get it here. That is a Google reference talking about Generation C. So the first thing to do is to have this myth that only I, if you were born in this millennial generation, or it's really hard, it's not for us. So first thing to forget is this concept. The other thing to, to keep in mind is this idea of collaboration, community, and content. Uh, you know, the connectivity has exactly to do with that. Right now, I was going through this path here of trying to follow the webinar on, on mobile as well, so that I can go and, and follow everything and interact better with you all. And Pri said, look, look, I'm not this tech savvy. I mean, we, we are and we aren't, and sometimes things change just a little bit, you know? Very well. Why am I going to use this document as a portal? Because this is something I do with my students as well. I start most classes with a white canvas. And this has helped me save loads and loads of time. Remember in the very, very beginning, where I mentioned the fact that you don't have to go and prepare and design those amazing PowerPoints. I mean, it's not entertainment. It is a class. There is this learning process students go through. So this is the first thing to consider. As I move along here, Let me share the screen again. I'm going to go back and forth in this process, okay? Something that I use with my students as well is Instagram, okay? Uh, I'm finally getting to access the YouTube chat. I think it took, it's going to be easier for us. This is connectivity, communication. Yeah, I think I'm there. And uh, yes, I can finally get to see the comments. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are right there. And that is the link to my Instagram as a teacher. I think some of you know. And this Instagram was born, just to contextualize, it was born out of a need to reach people through this more common media. Let me say something here. Okay, let me sign in. I have blogged since 2012, blogger platform. And what happens is that things have evolved and changed and just writing is not enough. So, I understood that could be a better way of communicating with my students and teachers. Let me just find here because, you know, technology goes this way. Suddenly you are connected, then you are logged in another account, but that is fine. And I'm contextualizing because this is our very next step to work through, let me see if it gets to me now, if it lets me, yeah. Okay, so in the chat, I have finally posted the link and I would like you to be there. That's what it looks like. Good. 
This is where I talk to students and colleagues via stories, and you know that. But I also use the, the feed as a platform to give my students a voice. And that's precisely uh, our next step very soon. There is an article uh, that I'm going to share with you. It's about Generation C, just to develop a bit deeper. And it goes through different paths of what it is and the characteristics. And I'm going to use these in two ways. Let me share the link with you. So I'm just sharing the link via the document. So if you are there, you can reach this link. And I'm going to assign you a task which resembles what I usually do with my students. And I'd like to count on your cooperation. By the way, just before we go, uh, do you have Instagram, the teachers who are following here? Yeah, if you could go to the comments and just say a yes or no, because this is going to be very relevant right now for our exchange of ideas. So look at me. The webinar is going on. I've got here my phone and I'm going to share something with you by using my phone. This is pretty much what happens in class. The first tool I started using with you was the tool of Google Docs. This tool of Google Docs is like a white canvas where we can interact with our students throughout a class. I mean, not at all times, but it's important that there are some moments for that. And why? Because learning also goes through registering what we are studying and the new things and the new facts that come along. The thing about using tech tools has to do with the fact that we can collaborate, we can do that as a group. So our next task here is going to be one activity that I'm going to share with you through my phone in Instagram, which is our next platform. Let me just paste this here as well in this document. While I finalize to paste this link, I'm going to give you like two or three minutes and I would like you, the audience, all of you, please, to read through this article and choose a sentence or paragraph that calls your attention, something that you find interesting uh, while reading. And then what you do is this, for instance, if I'm reading through the article and I find, just as an example, that this sentence is interesting. So you're going to copy this sentence and this is going to be in your clipboard. And during these two minutes you are reading through, <laughs> we are simulating a very, very intense uh, reading moment here. Choose something and I'm going to share via Instagram a task for all of us, okay? And then that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna watch me going through this, okay? As 
as you can see, I'm here creating a task to my students during this reading time. And then you think, Rachel, but this is wild. I mean, this is really crazy. Why that? Because if you consider how things come up and the ideas we have, many times there is a lesson plan to be followed, but something you have an insight, an idea, and maybe you have to change things a little bit here and there. And one message that is really necessary to make clear is that working with technology goes through both paths. You plan things ahead, but there are also things that spring along with the moment. So our next task is going to be based on this article here. which has a theme of working through connectivity. And this is like being everywhere, regardless of what you are. I'd like you please to share the key points of the article. This is exactly what I do with my students in class. So the challenge goes, and I'm posting right now. You are going to see here as it finishes up, a photo of two mobile phones. Yeah, there you go, Let's see. So I'd like you to go to my Instagram, find this photo here. It actually doubles uh, because it has the photo of the webinar as well. But this is the photo I'm talking about. And I would like you please to paste in the comments the key sentences you chose regarding this article we read here, okay? And I'm moving along uh, with the webinar. So we went through two tools here. I'll be talking while you finalize this task because it's part of our conversation here. So, okay, you can have a Google Docs and let me uh, just very quickly navigate you through this. That's where you change the permission of the doc. When you click there and then advanced, change, and then you decide if anyone with the link can edit or comment or view. We are going to use this edit uh, in a second, okay? But this could only be something to share. The second tool I'm proposing here is the use of Instagram. And let me show you another activity I conducted with my students. Uh, this was like the first day of classes and we were talking about goals and career goals and achievements. And I used this platform. There was the link of the, the original article they had to read. And then afterwards they shared their impressions. And if you go through here, as I'm showing you, even though everybody got to read the same article, we have here a collection of different perspectives because that's what we are human beings interacting. We look at the same thing and we see through different perspectives. And of course, afterwards, the next step is the conversation. Mind you that this is the kind of activity that a student who is far away can also join and take part, as I hope you are taking part, okay? I'm giving you some time uh, with this, in, you know, considering this possibility. So 
So we think of tools and we need to consider the tools that are, of course, we need to understand, okay, where do I click? Where do I go? For instance, when I very quickly showed you how to change the permissions so your students use that uh, document either to read or maybe to write. We can use Instagram if you have an account for that purpose. So this is something to consider. The procedures of learning are important. So uh, for managers and coordinators, it's important that teachers feel confident in terms of the step-by-step -step of the specific tool you intend to use. It's not like a miracle. Maybe a tutorial will work for you. Maybe you haven't got enough time for that. Maybe it's just sitting down with a colleague who, like in the, it was mentioned in the first article, is digitally savvy. I mean, just a little bit, but the key word is this communication, collaboration, which happens in any levels. But we are teachers, remember? And being teachers, uh, we need to have clear principles for our choices. Because after all, it's not about entertaining. It's about teaching. It's about guiding students through a learning experience. Registering, using technology to register via writing. May that be, for instance, uh, via social media, like a Google Docs or, uh, sorry, a Google Classroom or Instagram or Edmodo. Okay, we're considering the possibilities. Uh, I love this UNESCO guide for mobile learning. And I will share that with you in the document later on. Uh, because there are, the, it goes deeper into these reasons. And one thing that caught my attention when I read this, the awareness of mobile learning through advocacy, leadership, and dialogue, is that it starts with the word negative social attitudes. And unfortunately, this is something that has been going on. Look, at one point it says, people tend to view mobile devices as portals to entertainment, not education. And technology is regularly dismissed as distracting or even disruptive in school settings. And if as a teacher, we feel that uh, this comes from UNESCO, UNESCO Mobile, <laughs> Let me just type here. It's UNESCO Mobile Learning Policies. I'll share the document with you later on. Let me just share this in the chat. It's from last year, so it's not a long time ago. So it's 2019, 2018, and people look at using mobiles not as educational, but as disruptive. So we need to reevaluate our beliefs here. But okay, while these views are changing, policymakers can also take steps to educate the public about the benefits. And this public goes as teachers, the school direction in the different levels there are, and our students. So I think this is uh, something crucial to consider to because it ref, it leads us to mindset to this difference to this attitude and say look you know it's a difference in terms of mindset I'd like to invite you here please uh, to go Remember, I told you in Instagram, yeah? So what you have to do is the following. You find the post and click in comments. There is a small balloon. Yeah, found it in comments. And then there, 
I'd like you to share one thing from the article which called your attention. For instance, and I'm doing this right here, it's so important that we go through the process because when we go through the process, we understand what our students go through and we go beyond just listening. Ah, okay, uh, this is interesting, but okay. What is it that your student has to go through while using a tool? So I'm here and I would like you audience to help me out in this sense. So you go to, to the text first. Remember that I shared with you. Choose something that you believe is teaching you things and then copy to share that. And I'm going to do, you know, <laughs> and do the same here with you. So I found something in the article that I found insightful. So I copy, I select first, then I copy here. And I would like you to try to do that, to experience the process your students are going through. And then I come here to Instagram, clicking this balloon, and then I paste here something I learned from reading this article or something I agree or disagree, and I would like you to keep on. We have a short time, I know. Let's move along. Very well. Let me share the screen again with you. We think of the learning purposes first. So let's consider the two tools I'm using here, Google Docs and Instagram. And I think, okay, do I want collaboration among students? Do I want them to have presentation skills to, to work with this during a class? Is it about summarizing, experiencing something? Is it about the research? And a, a very important thing that goes along, especially when we use uh, tools such as, and I'm going to type this in the, the chat. If we consider, for instance, Google Classroom or Edmodo, which are platforms that resemble social network, but in a more, in a safer environment for our students. So I'm, I'm typing, typing here in the chat for you. Maybe you can ask me a question, Raquel, but what if I'm a private language teacher, I work one-to-one? -one? Well, there are other opportunities as well. You can either work with this student and at some moments create a mini study group so they can interact with each other, or you can also make use of social media. It's all about your creativity. So the other tool is here. When we think, for instance, of experiencing, then I use Google Cardboard and I'm going to share something with you. I'm, I'm sharing everything through the chat in YouTube, okay? which is the virtual reality experience through Google, Google Cardboard Box. And if I go here, okay, it is very simple. So you just add the phone here, go to YouTube, and then you have a class. Let me just go out here. And then your students experience going through 
the ex this visiting another place, another reality, but there must always be a connected end to that. I'm going to, if you want to go a bit deeper on that, there is this link I'm sharing right away in our chat. I, as a teacher, I love this connectivity, you know, because that's what makes us uh, go beyond the walls of a classroom. I'm teaching here, I'm here with you, uh, delivering this webinar, sharing uh, some of the things I have learned as a teacher. And another thing that I have learned as a teacher is how to take risks. Like right now, uh, I'm presenting here and I'm asking the people taking part to go read a text and contribute to the post I shared. This is a risk because right now, by the way, I'm quite sad. I haven't seen anybody going there. Look, let me just share this again. <laughs> and just having a taste of what it is like to go here and feel like what the students do and paste, you know. So there is like one comment. I would like really to see through this by the end of the presentation. Let's see how that goes. Then accountability and digital citizenship, just to wrap up, it's because we are teaching students how to behave online. So this thing, what do I post? What if I mistype a word? Then, okay, copy, delete, go again. Respect the other people's opinions. Express what you think, you know? Then everything here, maybe we are going to work usually when you make such a choice, one or two aspects. Here's my suggestion of a toolkit for teachers. It is like makeup, you know, <laughs> or it, it is like a collection of anything we have. We choose some of the tools and we make use of those tools steadily. Because if what happens is that you use it once in a blue moon, oh, then it's not going to happen because students will not understand that you, teacher, see that as a learning tool. I'm, I'm sharing the comments of Instagram, the precise link that you have to go, okay? If that's helpful. And uh, I'm going to paste the precise link there in the doc as well. So Google Docs, it's simple. Everybody has access. Google Slides, why not give your students the chance to get ready for real life situations that involve presenting? You know, it's to paste a photo, use the mobile phone as a platform to speak. Instagram, like what I'm doing right now. Also, uh, the virtual reality, for example. Let me type here in this doc. And while I'm working, I do exactly what I'm doing right now. So I've got here the laptop where I'm chatting somehow with you <laughs> and updating the links. And there is the phone here. <laughs> and I'm looking here and there. Because remember, Generation C, it's not about the age, it's about connectivity. 
Let me just, yeah. Okay. Uh, if it helps, the link is here. <laughs> Have fun, you know. This is part of the process as well. I'm going to wrap up because I know time flies. And have fun while going through the process of using technology. Uh, there is something I learned in an immersive experience about a year ago. That is this EPIC, it's uh, this acronym, and creating EPIC moments. So what is that? It's something that can be a guidance while uh, you are teaching and preparing your classes and making decisions on what tools to use. So be standing for elevation, be bright. You know, when I look at my students' production uh, in Google Classroom, or when I look at that in Instagram, what they do, you know, I feel really proud of how much, look here, that they go and share. Uh, let me show you uh, Google Classroom as well, because I feel immensely proud. And, and they feel proud as well of the work they do. And it's important that we give our students a chance to go beyond only taking private notes in a notebook that many times they are not even going to open. You know, so we've got here the comments, uh, depending on the theme, like here. And they go and talk about things. So here they watch a video and we register their experience, their perceptions. So this is pride. You can see concrete evidence of what you did. The insight, the perception of learning something I did not know before. So if there is this research exchange of ideas, also through reading, you can understand how to organize the sentence before you speak. It gives you some background knowledge. And of course, our keyword is connect. When we connect, we don't forget because connecting is also navigating our students through the experience. It is amazing when I can be talking to an audience of teachers like these photos show face to face. But it is even more when I have students working during classes with a target, with timing, producing, registering what they are learning. And there is a student who's not in class and is also able to join. Uh, to conclude here, there are three hashtags that I have been using and following, which are, it takes a teacher, and uh, Inovar Pra Mim, which is in Portuguese, and Teachers Bloggers. And this is a whole new topic on how us teachers can showcase the work we do, but this would have to be another webinar, okay? Uh, right now, I'd like to thank you so much for your attention, yeah? Uh, it's, you know, a bit, I know it's difficult for all of us uh, teaching in a hurry, but I'd also like to congratulate you for focusing on your professional development. The aim, one of the aims of this webinar was to give you insights of how to work and to consider this connectivity possibility. Well, if you can, share if you believe this can help another colleague and get in touch, follow the blog. Uh, we are stronger when we are together. We help each other by connecting and giving and walking students through a more meaningful learning experience. Braut community, thank you very much.
I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. I'm a bit over time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Actually, uh, you were over time, but I was I, I was very entertained. I was like paying a lot of attention. I was just like, okay, let it be. I'm very interested. I was learning a lot. Actually, um, I've, I've learned a lot of stuff I didn't know. So thank you so much. Like every CPG month webinar, I'm learning something I didn't know. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Let's check some of the comments. And I don't think we have any questions, but we do have comments. Um, let me check. So Natalia, uh, she was very uh, participative. She was participating a lot. Uh, she said a lot of times, like, it's great. She was sorry for being late because she, she thought, I think she thought that she missed something. But Natalia, you can uh, watch it again later. It's fine. Um, and that she was impressed with your enthusiasm. So I think you got a new fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, because mindset again. <laughs> Thank yeah. You, Thank you very much. And although we don't have uh, any questions here now, but uh, most of our of our webinars, they have more uh, people watching afterwards. So I think you might have questions on comments later. So uh, you can uh, answer questions on, on YouTube comments later because uh, our webinars tend to have a lot of views afterwards. Yeah. So <laughs> be ready uh, for way, questions for sure. I have painting the doc. Uh, remember I mentioned UNESCO mobile policy. So I'm updating that doc so if you want to take a look which is very helpful and again if you read the article and would like to participate to take part in instagram i would love that it would be great always uh, going through the student's experience all right so thank you so much Hakeo, again and I think I will, I will rewatch the webinar to get some stuff that I didn't because it's so much and I am not that savvy yet. I'm still learning. So I'm going to watch it again. I'll probably have some questions. I'll just send them to you <laughs> and then we keep learning. We never stop learning, right? Yeah, true. It's so important. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks yeah, so for this opportunity. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. And good night, everyone, and see good you night. next on our next webinar. Bye.